I've had some people asking me on YouTube what kind of filtration system I got with this tank for these sharks. <clears throat> this is a sump. It's probably about 60 inches long, 36 inches, actually about 37 and a half inches wide. It's about 28 inches tall. Uh, see a UV filter there? That's a Coraline skimmer. It's only a 300 gallon. I've actually got another one over there that I took out. The other one will be here in two days. It's an Aqua C1000. I'll probably be running it with this Coral View skimmer. This 300 gallon, which will give me about 1,300 gallons of skimming power per hour. As you can see, I got tons and tons of room over here for more skimmers. I could probably put five of these skimmers or six of them at least in this thing if I really wanted to. Two ceramic heaters down in here. Float valve for the RO system that runs through my ceiling into the tank. Keep the water levels the same all the time. Two little giant pumps. I'm going to use an internal pump, a mag drive. It does about uh, 1,500 gallons an hour on that Aqua Sea skimmer when it comes in. These are outflows that run up, pump it into the middle of the tank. I've got all the wiring put up so that there's no so nothing runs into the outlets and it's all ran down. And it plugs into the wall outside of the tank. As you can see here, I got plenty of room for storage and all that good stuff down here that I need. We actually had to take the support beam out of the aquarium to get this sump in one of those one of the support beams. So that was a little edgy because this thing was so big, but I had it custom made. Down here I got about 20, I got about six gallons of uh, matrix in here that I use, along with four Kimi Pure Elite bags. These bags run you around 200 bucks for four of them. There's enough matrix in here to do about 2,400 gallons to 2,600 gallons of water. It actually might be more than the gallons I just gave you. I can't even remember. They dumped so much in here. I use this water pumps into the top of this and uh, sits into this tray here where there's three very thick foam pads that filter up all the gunk. This drawer here and here slides out onto this platform and it slides right out. I just pull it out, pull them out, put some more in and I'm good to go and I'm done. This is the other skimmer that I had that I'm not going to be using anymore. I just left the one in there because it's only going to be about a day or two before my other one gets in. So when that other one gets in, I'm going to sell that one. This is a 500 gallon uh, uh, Aquaripure denitrator. Uh, most, a lot of people are against vodka dosing and all this. This thing runs off of vodka. But I actually like this. It's uh, even with the previous system I had, which was a pretty decent system. It was just kind of like the way it was put together. I wouldn't get the results I wanted. So I ran this Aquaripure in here. And it actually held my nitrates very low, surprisingly considering how much I have to feed and how messy these animals are. So it's pretty impressive. Uh, the tank's about a thousand gallons. I'm getting right now out of the two pumps probably about 5,800 gallons an hour. So I'm cycling this tank about five, about 5.8 to six times an hour. The skimmer's gonna, uh, with the two skimmers going, I should have, I'll be having about 1,300 gallons an hour of skimming power. And uh, these three foam pads catch just about everything that comes. The skimmers don't get, even get that much, to be honest with you, which is great because it keeps all that uh, detritus building up in the matrix and causing your nitrates to spike. And this right here, I just changed all the pads out and did a bunch of stuff to the filtration. So you have to forgive how cloudy the tank is. It's actually usually a way clear. Well, this is the tank that it runs. It's a square all the way around. Got three sharks in here, multiple other fish, big line fish, wrasse, squirrel fish, a couple squirrel fish, blonde nasa tank. I actually have a 14 inch orange shoulder tank in here, but he's hiding behind the rocks and you can't see him. He's back there. So yes, there is enough rock in here for a 14 inch orange shoulder tank to hide. This is a banded hound shark, or Japanese leopard shark, whatever you want to call it. They just got done eating. Another reason the water's a little cloudy because they're messy eaters. It's a white spotted bamboo shark. Both these guys are a little over two, right at two feet, maybe a little over two feet. And I have a 26 inch coral cat shark that somehow never comes out unless it's time to eat or it pitch dark at night. 
and uh, hides behind these rocks 24 hours a day. I also have a about a three foot zebra moray eel that you can almost see back there. And I had a stingray, a blue spotted stingray that was about 18, 17 inches across until I, my lionfish stuck him. Uh, it kind of ran, looked like it ran into him and killed him. And uh, up until then, I'd had him for about nine or ten months, and he was doing great. Kind of unfortunate to lose him. Um, Harlequ Australian Harlequin Tusk, Blue Tang, Blonde Nasso Tang, he's about 11, 10 inches. Selfin Tang, uh, Yellow Tang, got a little, today I see he's got a little split in his fin, so I don't know if something got a hold of him or what. Sun Coral, with some mushrooms, Gorgonian. And as you can see, all the all the life I've got. I got a little Duncan over here that was bloomed up, but my sharks were eating and kind of stirred him up a little bit and freaked him out. A lot of aptasia in here, but to be honest with you, I don't. It doesn't seem to bother anything. I know it's not good, but I don't even mess with it. All this. Uh, there's another big mushroom over here, another Gorgonian. A lot of this life was already on this rock when I bought it. It came from Fiji. They have it brought in. So 90% of the stuff that's on this rock was already grown on it. As you can see, the dead snail shells everywhere uh, this wrasse that I can't stand but I can never get him out of the tank unfortunately is uh, a huge problem because he eats about every snail I put in here so if I want a hundred snails I gotta buy about 140 and I've got a bunch of the master snails down in the sand probably about 50 of them that are huge or gigantic uh, a bunch of turbo snails that overall you're probably looking at about total 200 to 150 snails and you're also probably looking at around um, probably about 200 different kinds of crabs uh, in this tank here. There's also, if you look over here, red sea star or African red starfish, whatever they call them. And I've got two sand stars in here, but they always spend most of their time buried in the sand. They come out from time to time, but I don't see them that often. So that's it. That's what it takes to run a shark tank, in case you were wondering.